Welcome to the Arc Junkies Podcast. My name is Jason Becker, and I'm your host. The mission of the show is to help, educate, and inspire the next generation of welders. Join me each week as I take you on a journey through the world of welding. With over 25 years of experience as a welder and fabricator, I bring my expertise to the table each week as I interview guests from all facets of the welding industry. From pipe welding to structural, underwater welding, and everything in between, we cover it all. Whether you're a student, a hobbyist, instructor, or a seasoned pro, this show's for anyone who's passionate about welding. What's up, everyone? Welcome to show number 268. I hope you all had a great weekend. In this week's episode, I'm bringing Dusty James back on the show. He just dropped a new video on his YouTube channel that took him about two years to complete. He did everything in the video himself, from the recording to the welding, the editing, and creating the music. It's such a badass piece, and I wanted to get him on the show to talk about it. We also discuss finding your passion, which can be difficult for a lot of people. I consider myself lucky I was able to find my passion in welding at such a young age, but it's never too late for you to find your own passion. We'll get right into the episode after a quick word from our supporters. Today's episode of the Arc Junkies podcast is brought to you by CK Worldwide, the standard in TIG welding. Are you looking for a powerful, versatile, and easy-to-use TIG welding machine? Then look no further than the all-new MT375 ACDC machine from CK Worldwide, the ultimate solution for all your TIG needs. This dual-voltage TIG welding system is fully equipped with a dual-pump water cooler and a utility cart, making it the perfect solution for the -the on-the-go welding projects. The high-frequency arc start ensures a smooth and consistent start every time, while the easy-to-use interface with analog dials make it easy to get dialed in. But that's not all. The MT375 ACDC comes with a patented steady grip foot pedal that quickly converts to a fingertip amperage control. This innovative design provides you with the best of both worlds, giving you the freedom to switch back and forth between a foot pedal and a fingertip control with ease. This package also includes a TL18 trimline 350-amp flex neck torch with super flex cables, ground clamp, argon hose, and an accessory kit. Don't settle for anything less than the best. Get your hands on the MT375 ACDC from CK Worldwide today and take your welding game to the next level. For more information on this machine, head on over to ckworldwide.com. You can also find a dealer nearby by clicking on the Find a Dealer tab. CK Worldwide, the standard in TIG welding. We're also brought to you by my friends at Outlaw Leather. Attention all welders, fitters, fabricators, ironworkers, and pipe welders. Are you tired of using flimsy, mass-produced gear that falls apart just after a few months? Then look no further than Outlaw Leather. Their custom welding hoods, bolt bags, rod pouches, and more are handcrafted with the highest quality materials to ensure they stand the test of time. They understand that your gear is your livelihood, and they want to provide you with the best possible tools to do your job. Their leather goods are built to last, and they take pride in each and every piece that they make. They even offer custom leather work as well. Just send your description to info at outlawleatherllc.com to place an order. And with their storefront location in Pasadena, Texas, you can even stop by and see their products firsthand. Not only will you be able to check the quality of their products firsthand, but you'll also be able to talk to their experts who can help you find the right gear. But even if you can't make it to their store in Pasadena, Texas, you can always check out their full selection on outlawleather.com. And you can use Arc Junkies in the checkout to get 15% off all their in-stock handmade leather goods. We're also brought to you by Rock Mount Research and Alloys. Maintenance welders, are you tired of using subpar welding rods and wires that just don't cut it when it comes to heavy equipment maintenance and hard facing? Then look no further than Rock Mount Research and Alloys. Their welding rods and wires are specifically designed to withstand the rigorous demands of heavy equipment maintenance and hard facing. Their products are of the highest quality, guaranteeing high performance and consistent results. In addition to the welding rods and wires, they also offer a full range of products including abrasives, burrs, bits, and blades, and as a special bonus for listeners of the Arc Junkies podcast, use code word ARCJUNKIES10 at checkout on their website, rockmountwelding.com, and you can get 10% off on all their burrs, bits, and blades. Take advantage of this great offer and stock up on all your metalworking consumables now. Don't settle for less. Trust Rock Mount Research and Alloys for all your welding and maintenance needs. You can purchase all their consumables, rods and wires, welding chemicals directly through their website, rockmountwelding.com. Their products are trusted by professionals worldwide, and they're confident they'll exceed your expectations. Visit their website today and see for yourself why they're the go-to choice for heavy equipment maintenance and hard-facing welding. Get the job done right the first time, every time, with Rock Mount. All right, you know what time it is. Fire up your machine, drop your hood, and turn me up five. You're listening to the Arc Junkies Podcast. Helping you make every weld better than your last with each episode. And now your host, 
Jason Becker. Dusty, what's been going on, man? It's uh, it's been a while. It's been a minute. Yeah, man, dude, your setup in there looks so cool. The background looks perfect. Thanks, dude. It's uh, yeah, I'm 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 happy with it. It's in a, it's in a good spot. <laughs> I just wish I, I need uh, I need some more desk area. So like the backdrop looks great and everything, but I need a little bit more room. I've been doing a lot more code work and stuff as far uh, as like procedure development, well qualifications, and you know I'm I'm operating out of three, four different code books, and I just don't have the the real estate. <laughs> I, I almost need to set up like a smaller mobile desk next to this one. Oh yeah. Yeah, do you have room to put more desks and stuff in there? No, I don't. I got my mini fridge and I've got like my little printer stand <laughs> over here. But uh, yeah, no, I don't have the room. Don't get rid of the mini fridge. You got to keep that. Oh uh, yeah, it's, don't get it's rid of freshly it. stocked too, man. I can't get rid of that. Yeah, what do you got in there right now? Uh, right now I got a couple beers, some Gatorades, uh, different sodas, got some waters, had some kombuchas in there earlier. Yeah, I have tons of variety. Oh yeah, it, well, like it, it always depends, you know, especially if I do like a uh, a session in studio. Like, I want to yeah. have, like, you know, a fully stocked fridge, you know, so that the guests have, like, a, a good selection to choose from, you know? Oh, you'd never get rid of me if I was there. I'd oh, be there. Come on down, dude. <laughs> I was trying to get you out here for Ink <laughs> the Bay, but I know it's a, it's a process getting out here, you know, especially yeah. being out on Vancouver Island. What, you get to take, like, a ferry, then a train, then a trolley, then a sub. <laughs> it's like a sub, yeah. Dude, it's, uh, I went to to Vancouver for a concert last weekend, and it was, like, I went totally solo by myself because uh, I no, I couldn't find anyone to go with. But it's just like, what a freaking process, dude! Like, got to catch a ferry, got to find someone to like drop you off at the ferry because you can't like leave your car there and stuff. And then like catch a bus to downtown Vancouver and like, yeah, it's just it's mayhem. But Who'd you go it's see? all good. Uh, I went to go see like a punk rock band called Stand Atlantic, and uh, there was another dude named Mod Son who I'm a big fan of. So. Yeah, yeah, it was dope, man. It was, it was actually like really well needed. I needed to get away to just, to, you know, enjoy a night out. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> no, I know, I know what you mean, man. I went uh, seen Soulfly a little bit ago. That was a pretty yeah, good show. How was that? It was good, man. It was in. It was like in this shithole dive bar, which was kind of uh, cool. But I mean, like last time I seen Soulfly, I want to say it was like at um, it was at House of Blues, and the time okay. before that was like Ozfest '99. So, oh, no like way. seeing him in front of like that volume of people. And then like seeing just a couple hundred people in a bar there to see him, it was kind of yeah. like, wow, like, you know, they're, they're not as big anymore. What, I mean, rightly so. I mean, it's been, they've been around for 20 some odd years, but I just figured like, I figured the venue would be a little bit bigger. Yeah. You're, you're one of the, di- the diehards then, hey? Eh? Yeah, like, I guess uh, so. I got my, I got my sticker yeah. to prove it. <laughs> no, it was, <laughs> it was, it was a good show though. I mean, like they sounded freaking great. And now, uh, his son is playing drums for him. Oh, so, no way. Yeah, it's that. actually pretty cool. No, it was oh, a, Max it was a good show. A, he, Max is an OG man. Like that guy's a, a staple in the music scene for sure. So, oh hell yeah, yeah. But, yeah, well, it was a good, good time. It was nice getting away. I was trying to go see uh, Shine Down because uh, I finally got my wife into going to concerts and stuff like that. But like I was looking at uh, the tickets and they're like for just for uh, general admission was like one hundred forty six bucks a piece. And yeah, I was like, damn, yeah. dude. Like what happened to concerts? Like I remember paying like twenty five bucks for a concert and getting out there yep. and like you know, having a hell of a show. I think even for Oswald, yeah, that was, again, that was 20 years ago, but like tickets were like 30 bucks and it was like 15, you know, mainstream bands. Yeah. It's, it's different now for sure. I know COVID changed a lot for like touring musicians as far as like, you know, it's, it's way more expensive to tour. Yeah. Um, which is unfortunate, but I mean, like for me, dude, like it, it hurts sometimes to, to fork it over like that. But like, Concerts are like one of those things that I will always stand by as being like money well spent. Like yeah. it's just, it's, it's such a cool, yeah, such a cool experience, man. That is so, you can't duplicate it without being there. It's like, you can't watch videos of concerts on YouTube and experience a concert. It's not, they're not the same thing. Yeah, so it's, it's completely like, really different. Yeah. Yeah. I've always said like books, art and going to concerts is like the best money you'll ever spend. So, so yeah, man. I don't know. Yeah, uh, it's, it, it hurts sometimes, but it's like, you know, tickets go on sale for something. I'm like, just just tell me where to put my credit card. Information yeah, bite the bullet and go. go. Like when you went and see Blink-182, <laughs> that's kind of like oh, once in a lifetime opportunity. For sure, man. It's just so expensive. But I was like, what am I not going to go see? Like one of my favorite bands or like, you know, yeah, I, 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 it's, I, especially taking my kids now. Like it's like, man, this is a like 
experience that they're going to remember forever. So like, yeah, it's, I don't know. Yeah, I'll pay what I need to. It. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I enjoy like going to concerts and stuff, but I did stream a while back. The uh, Metallica did one called all within my hands foundation. And like yeah, okay. it was select tickets. Like they did it in San Francisco. Like I didn't want to fly out there and do all that. I mean, like it would have been a, a massive expense, but I streamed it on, on TV for like 25 bucks. So I got like a 60 inch TV in the living room. I got surround sound. So I just sat back and, you know, I poured a glass of whiskey and watched the show. And I was like, this is actually pretty damn cool. This is, not, you know, oh, for sure. <laughs> but, but yeah, like, you know, if they were to come to town or, you know, somewhere relatively close, I would definitely go and, you know, fork over the money to go see it. I see. I hear what you're saying. Yeah, it is like during COVID when that happened, a bunch of bands that I followed were doing online concerts. And mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's dope. Like you say, you hit the couch with some friends and you watch it and it's fun. Yeah. It's uh yeah. Yeah. When you can't go in person, I guess it's the next best thing, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's all you can do. A lot of them kind of did that during, uh, during COVID and stuff. They were doing stuff from their house and um, to bring up Metallica again, I know that they, they did like a simultaneous live stream, like each member of the band, they like, they have their own recording rooms at their houses. So they did, you know, like Lars was playing the drums, Kirk's playing the guitar, James is doing vocals and, you know, all that stuff. And, but they broadcasted it in one feed. So you could like listen to the music, you know, they were all in tune, all in time. And, but it was like, you had five different images on the screen. So that is pretty yeah. neat. Yeah, that is cool. I guess it, it has never been a better time for something like that to happen. It's like streaming and everything is so good right now. Yeah. So, we, we need that virtual reality stuff, man. Like, oh, dude, I don't <laughs> know about all that. <laughs> never leave the house again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, video games. are gonna it, like Next Grand Theft Auto that comes out in virtual reality, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, get those haptic feedback suits and everything like that so you can feel, you know, getting shot or punched in the chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll never, you'll never see me releasing episodes on YouTube anymore. I'll just be, <laughs> you'll be like, what happened to Dusty? Oh, VR came out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The new Grand Theft Auto dropped. He's gone. <laughs> yeah. So, how, how's things been on the, uh, on the channel there? I've seen you drop some pretty badass videos recently. Thanks, man. Yeah. It's, uh, it has been going well. Um, <clears throat> it's, I feel like I've hit a new kind of stage in like where I'm at with my channel. Like, I kind of had like, uh, a couple months ago, it's almost like things got too busy for me. I was at like a point where I just, I literally can't wear all the hats that I have been wearing up to this point of like writing episodes, recording episodes, working with online students in the program, um, working on art, uh, like emails, admin type of stuff, website and all that stuff. And like, it's just like, I'm starting to work on like making my online programs bigger. So that's requiring more time, but it's also like, like you probably know, like we talked about QuickBooks and stuff like that and yeah. whatnot in the last podcast. And it's like, those things are all very important for me to learn, but I just don't have time to keep taking these things on. So this is where I'm at now is like, I've kind of started to get some help, which has been dope. Um, which has really changed the game for me, man. It's like, I'm in here in the shop way more easily throughout the day. It's still, I still have a lot to do in the mornings, but like, yeah, dude, when I walk through the doors to come in here and flick all the lights on, it's just like, I know a lot of stuff is going to get taken care of for me now, which is really cool. So yeah, I'm like able to drop uh, more consistently as far as YouTube goes. And like, I'm trying to drop more like strategically on YouTube. So like, like you remember, like when you did, well, like, uh, YouTube videos in the past with your stuff, like it's, there's a method of like releasing as many episodes as possible or releasing like the best episodes possible. Yeah. And it's really hard to do both. Um, so I've really started to like notice that like, as I try and get more and more episodes out, I almost like catch myself cutting corners sometimes. Like I'm really rushing and I don't like doing that. Like I, I really pride myself on the videos I drop to be like, they're like, I'm, I'm so happy with them. Like, I don't want to click publish on anything until it's like a hundred percent. And like, you know, there's arc shots and stuff. I you could potentially do better. Like, like I'll go grab like a half hour in the shop and try and film something better. Like that's usually how I do it. But there's been times where I've just been like, ah, this is like, it's, it's pretty good. It's like good enough. Let's go. It's and, good enough. Uh, I got to get it like, out. So I don't want to do that anymore. And I've been like kind of taking my foot off the gas pedal as far as like, just like furious amounts of content but like the content i've been putting out has been like i don't know i feel like it's been better 
as far as quality. Um, but I, probably like the most important thing is like, I've been having more fun with everything lately. I, I'm trying some new ideas on the channel and, um, I don't know, man, it's just fun again. It's like, a, it's like, you need to shake things up and try something different. Cause like, like the, like you've left to do your own thing with your business. I've left to do my own thing. Like we left to do that, to like enjoy what we were doing and like create something. And yeah, anytime it feels stagnant or whatever, it's like a little pivot or trying something different kind of helps out to get that. I don't know. gets, it makes things exciting again. Yeah. And that's been the hard part of, of you know, walking away from a full-time gig into doing something for yourself is like, you get so immersed in the work that you're trying to put out the, you know, the quality, um, you know, the, the amount of work that you're pushing and stuff like that. It, it's easy to lose focus of why did I do this in the first place? Right. Or, you know, why, you know, what was, what was I thinking when I was like, Oh yeah, I'm just going to dip out of this job and do this. Like, you know, you can't lose sight of that. Like, I mean, there's a lot of benefits to being able to do it. And I tend, you know, to just continuously pick up more work. That's my thing. And it's like, no, 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 no. Stop picking up more work because like you left a full-time gig because you were doing the full-time gig plus your own side work. Well, now my side work is my new full-time gig. Stop trying to find more work. <laughs> like you, you don't need it. Like take the time off and relax and, and do, you know, the, and that's kind of, that was the driving force be behind me leaving my full-time job and starting my own company is to, you know, now I've got more time with the family, which I still do. But it's it's uh it's been fun trying to like dial myself back and like really start enjoying some of the things that you know these these are the reasons that I left in the first place. Yeah, man, a hundred percent. And I think like that speaks to your character of like your work ethic and stuff. Like, you know, when we see like opportunities throughout our work week to fill it with something, like I like working. Like I, I enjoy. Like I even had one of my friends, I didn't even make a video of it. He's like, Hey, can you weld up like this grid for the back of my work truck? And I was like, fuck yeah. Like, like, of course, just commit to something else during the week. Exactly. <laughs> but it's like, damn, I just like doing stuff like that. And that's, that's the tough line to draw. And I know you and I have spoken a lot about that, that it's just like, there's, you know, it's tough because like we want to do good work and also taking on jobs like that and jobs like you do it it's a way that you and I level up. Like we learn more about what we do as a craft. So it's hard to say no to that. Like even when it's at our detriment of like, man, I got no time right now to work on extra stuff, but yeah. I still say yes to shit. <laughs> well, I just did it to myself here recently because like I've going through the podcast, everything's going great, you know, planning everything out for the year, getting everything set up and, you know, learning some new stuff with the audio and how to edit and, you know, getting a camera kit or a camera set up and everything so I can start doing like mobile recordings for YouTube. And then I get a couple phone calls. It's like, Hey, you know, like we need some procedures developed or, Hey, we need our guys tested or I'm like, Oh yeah, I could do that. I could do that. Well, like everything literally fell over the course of two weeks. So like all last week I'm testing guys and all this week, other than today I'm testing, you know, guys, I, I was actually, well, guys and gals, but um, the only reason I was able to do this podcast today is because one of the clients canceled. They're like, Hey, the guy, you know, the, they're not ready. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll reschedule for later. <laughs> so I'm now yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get all this stuff done and I, I put myself under the gun. I, I do enjoy working under pressure. Um, I, I don't know what that is. If it's my ADD, it helps me get super focused when I got a timeline or a crunch. Um, you know, so now I'm able to get everything super focused because I leave on Monday for Washington DC for a week. So now I'm yeah. trying to get all these guys, get the certifications done, get the paperwork done, you know, complete the rest of the the cuts and the bends and all that stuff, the visuals, uh, so that once I leave, they're not, you know, all these clients, they're not waiting for a week for me to get back and bend coupons or, you know, do paperwork. I'm trying to get it all knocked out before I leave. And it's like, it's a grind, but I love the work. It's, <laughs> it's, it's catch 22. No, that's good, man. I mean, like, that's something that won't go away for you and I, like, you know, if like you, like, you know, your podcast grows and grows and gets bigger. And like, if I'm what, I, what I'm doing on my show, like, you know, keeps going and doing what it's doing. Like, I'm very confident that that won't change it or with the both of us. Like, I don't know. We just enjoy it, man. And I think like, it, it'll be a balance that we'll need to figure out over time. Like, you know, what are we comfortable saying no to? And yeah. like, what are we comfortable allowing back in our week as far as like, cause like, man, like, um, my kids are like at an age, I want to spend the most time with them. And like, it's anything that takes me away from that is like a problem right yeah. now. So it's like, 
you know, when they're at school or where they're like, my got a three-year-old, he's at, he's at daycare and stuff. So it's like, um, or preschool, sorry. He's like, um, during those hours, I'm like, cool. Like, you know, I'll wake up early and do my thing. And then like, when it comes time for pickup or whatever, like I'm, I'm washed, like there's nothing left. I'm going to, I'm going to pick up as far as like what I'm doing that day. But yeah, I don't know, man, I'm sure it will evolve too. Right. Like you might notice like, or I mean, I might notice when my kids are full time in school and like hanging out with their friends and they don't, you know, don't want to hang out with me as much. <laughs> I'll probably have more time to like, you know, take on more projects and stuff like that. But for now it's, it's kind of perfect. Like the balance of YouTube working with my online students and then like finding time for art and music again has just been like so good, man. I really needed it. Like getting to the gym more and stuff like that. It's like, yeah, I feel like the balance is starting to come back for me. It's still like, work, finally. But it, it's a way to decompress. <laughs> so necessary, man. It's so necessary. Like I used to just go to the gym cause I had to, and I didn't want to be like, you know, a lazy piece of shit, <laughs> but, but like, I really enjoy it now. Like I, I get there and I feel good and I like have a program and like, you know, it's like, I re I'm really enjoying it. And it's like, even though I, I could, I, there is a part of me still that's like, dude, that's an hour and a half. You could spend like, you know, doing your emails in the morning or like writing an episode for your show. Like, it's like, no, it's, there is a time during the day when I need to just like, you know, my phone stays in my bag in my locker and I just Bluetooth headphones and just, it, it's super worth it, man. It's yeah. so worth it. That's, that's what I started doing. I'll just put the phone on do not disturb when I get to the yeah. gym. Otherwise it's like, you know, you feel that little buzzing in your pocket or you hear ding, you know, in the headphones and stuff. And it's like, nope, do not disturb. Important people can get a hold of me. Like, you know, they can call me twice. If they call back to back, it'll go through. But like every, like everybody that's on my favorites list or whatever, they know, <clears throat> okay, he's, he's probably at the gym. He'll call me back when he's done. But yeah. I'll do the same thing, man. Put it on do not disturb. Get in there. The hard part is just getting to the gym. And I think we we talked about this via WhatsApp. It's like, damn, dude, I could, you know, get out there and, and get a head start on this or, you know, I could finish this out or no, like just fucking go. And then like you halfway into the workout, you're like, dude, this is this is freaking awesome. And then when you get done and you're just completely out of gas, you're like, it's just like this great euphoric feeling. You're like, damn, that was like so worth it. I'm glad that I pushed myself to drive up to the gym and, and get my ass in there and just start moving weight. Dude. It's, it's so, it's so weird, man. Like I always, like I have, if I turn the camera on, I have like a little gym set up here in my shop, which is, which is pretty cool, but it's not the same. It's, it's like not. It, it, going to a place where, like you say, you leave your phone on silent mode or whatever. Like, like for me, I meet like one of my best friends there now. And, um, <clears throat> he, uh, you know, he wanted to start going because he wanted to like get better because he's like terrible at golf. So he like wanted to get better at, <laughs> at golf. He's probably listening now. He knows I'm talking shit, but uh, he, uh, I don't know. He wanted to like just get back into it, get some fitness going. And like for me and him, it was like, it was like, all right, if we're going to do this, like this is full commitment. Like, you know, <laughs> short of us being like falling down sick, like you show up and yeah, man, it sucks sucks so bad like we go really early in the mornings but like when you finish it's it's the best best start to your day and you i know you hear like people listening will hear this like from a million different like people like oh leaving the gym is the best feeling ever and all this stuff but it really is like it's it's awesome it, you're it, my mind works better like i have a little more clarity and like especially i take like a nice long drive home with a coffee and it's just like it's like the best time of my day really yeah it it, it kind of gives you, it recenters you and allows you to refocus. Yep. Yeah. Which is great. Cause then when you hit the, hit the computer for emails or like, like, uh, when I finish the day and I'm in here, like work, I can work on art cause I've like fully done everything I'm supposed to do throughout the day. It's, uh, I don't know. It's just a, just a better, my day works better with yeah. it. Now tell me about that. Speaking of art, tell me about that piece yeah. that you just did the, uh, the beginning. Yeah. Thanks, man. Uh, so yeah. So anybody who hasn't seen it, um, go to my YouTube channel on Pacific Arc TIG welding and it's just called the beginning. So I've done art pieces like you've seen. Uh, I kind of do like a vlog, I guess you could call it. I hate using that word, but it's, it kind of is what it is. I kind of like document how I'm making it and I like explain all this stuff and I like show the process of it being made. And then the end is like kind of a reveal type of thing. Um, which is cool. 
And I, I will probably do something like that for the beginning, but like, like, like I've talked about on the podcast before I have like a back or sorry, a history in like playing music. Um, I was in a band for a really long time. Like music's probably my favorite thing, like ever period. (laughs) So I, um, I've been writing a lot of music over the past like 10 to 15 years, um, and just kind of stockpiling it. And I also really got the idea of like combining. So like there's three huge passions I've had in my life, welding, music, and like filmmaking is probably like my third one. I went to school actually for filmmaking, like after high school so it's kind of like three things that i've just consistently done like my whole adult life and i got the idea to combine the three of them so it was like i obviously film everything but i want to do like a cinematography type presentation of an art piece um and is there a way i can combine all three of those things so i started working on a soundtrack so like a like an actual score with a symphony like a full choir and like all kinds of like insane music plugins. And uh, I made this huge score for the work, for the art piece as I was making the art piece. And then I combined everything together at the end with like a presentation that is literally just music, film and the physical art piece. You can watch it like being started out from scratch, um, literally just scribbling on a piece of stainless with a pencil. And then, start to weld it and you know the process of it being made and then the final presentation at the end is just like something that i wrote the music to really like just you know like pack some punch with that final presentation and i mean obviously i'm biased because i made it but i I feel like it came across like you know with a lot of power and like it, it was like something really for me it's like i make episodes each week on my channel for other people. Like I genuinely mean that I do everything I can to help people out with welding. But like, this was just a hundred percent for me. It was like, I want to see this thing that I worked so hard in a presentation that I would want to see something presented as. And that's what it came out as man. It's like, yeah, it really was a process of creating multiple forms of art all at once. It's like the physical art piece then presenting it with editing and filming and then um, yeah, creating music for it as well. Yeah. It it turned out really cool. I mean, like the music definitely fits, you know, the entire scene and like the transitions you were doing, like you had like fog or smoke rolling through there on different parts. I was like, dude, like this whole piece is, is very cool. And it's not typically like your other videos to where it's like a tutorial. It's like, just, just sit back and and watch me do my thing. And I think that was really cool because I don't think you've ever done something like that before as far as like doing the music the video the welding the whole like putting it all together packaging it up into it's almost like a music video that's exactly what i wanted it's rad as shit dude it's it's freaking cool (laughs) and then the piece that you did is amazing like i've told you that before like the the style that you have reminds me uh very similar to like the the lateralis album from tool and like just the whole thing is like, man, that's freaking badass. And the fact that you can take three things that you're passionate about and you're damn good at all three of them and lace those and create one final product and just be able to release that to the world is freaking insane. Oh, thank you, man. It's, um, yeah, it's like, like I started out when I was going to start doing TIG welding art. Cause like there was guys like Matia bros, dabs, and like, there's several other like really, really good people at it. And, um, I never wanted to just be another guy doing that stuff. Like I almost like respected those dudes and the work they did so much that I was like, Hey, I got to do something completely different. So I feel like the first few art pieces that I dropped were like quite different. I incorporate like a lot of paints and like, you know, some 3d stuff off of like the piece as well to like, you know, add to it in that way. And then I was just like, once I got the idea to just essentially make a music video for each piece, I was like, it really clicked. It was like one of those aha moments that I don't think I'll ever forget. It was just like, that's it. That is how I'm going to make this completely my own thing. Where like, it'll be the art piece, sure. But it's just more of like, it's like an experience. That's why I called it a, a TIG welding experience. It's like, you don't have to know shit about TIG welding. You can 
be a welder. You can be like just anybody that comes across a video. Like you can watch that and enjoy it the same way somebody could watch a movie. It's like you just get in on the plot, you follow along, and then you know there's a beginning and an end. That's yeah. This is kind of that's why I call it the beginning. It was like I really found what I excuse me what I wanted to do as far as like following a path in my art. And um, yeah, it's it's really started something special for me, man. Like I've got crazy ideas for next next pieces i want to do now how did how long did this entire video take to make like from conception to final release and you hit publish on youtube yeah i started it um so it it would be two years exactly at the end of march damn two yeah years so it's march for a five for, minute video yeah exactly right it's <laughs> not a, a lot not of, a, that's not a, a lot of work a lot of effort yeah it's not a lot of uh return on investment of time as far as what i made off youtube on that <laughs> <laughs> it's um yeah man but it's like it's all good right like that's the thing that i learned about art is like you can't rush that like it's just i i went to i would start that part that piece i would you know engrave it all get ready for welding and then i would actually have like a couple weeks of like i don't like really know how to describe it but like i was almost really nervous to start um like as you see the final product it's like a really in-depth thing that takes a lot of time um and you don't want to fuck anything up and you want to do like you, you got a picture of what you want it to be inside your head so you don't want to like change that but it's like there was times where i would like do work on it and be like super motivated and then i would just come into the shop like the next week to work on it and be like ah oh, like i just maybe i'll just take a few weeks it's like that inner resistance from like we talk about uh like have you read war of art no not yet Okay. So that, that's a really crazy book. It, it applies to literally anything. It doesn't have to be art, but it's just like when you get into something that's like really challenging, like the subject of resistance that like really messes with people. Um, you know, I felt it a lot when I was going back to school for welding. Um, I was like 30 at the time and was like, I finally got the opportunity to do my apprenticeship after like 11 years of welding. <laughs> so it's like, but I, there, you, there's just such an inner, like, I, I don't know, everything's fine right now. Like, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. And like, there's just like a resistance to get into more ambitious stuff. And I've talked about it on my Instagram a lot about like, how a lot of the, like the best things in life, as far as like, what can come out of hard work is, is hard to do. It's really intimidating sometimes. And like, it's, uh, it usually just takes an, an initial kind of like some initial momentum to get it going. And then once it starts going, you can kind of like feel that momentum. And then on the other side of it, it's just awesome. It's like we talked about with the gym, dude. It's like, you're like, like you don't want to do it at all. You know, it's going to be good and you committed to it. So you're going to do it, but it's like, you still feel this, like, like it sucks. You're dreading it. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's something holding you back. All right, we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. This segment of the art junkies podcast is brought to you by strong hand tools. Are you tired of using flimsy, low-quality tools that just don't get the job done? Upgrade your toolkit with Stronghand Tools. Stronghand Tools are designed with precision and durability in mind. Their products are engineered to make your work easier, faster, and more efficient than ever before. Whether you're welding, fabricating, or working on a project at the house, Stronghand Tools has got you covered. From their innovative MagTab magnetic holders to their unique Rhino tables, Stronghand Tools is dedicated to providing you with the best tools for the job. And the best part? Right now, they're offering a special promo on their website at stronghandtools.com backslash promo. You can get 10% off all their tables and 5% off all their 5 8 tooling. So don't wait any longer. Head on over to stronghandtools.com backslash promo and start building your dream toolkit with Stronghand Tools. You won't regret it. We're also brought to you by Everlast Welders. Everlast offers a wide range of high-quality, reliable welding machines that are designed to meet the demands of any welding project. From TIG and MIG to plasma cutting and stick welding, Everlast has a machine for every application. But that's not all. Their products are made with the latest technology and advanced features to make your welding experience smoother and more efficient. Plus, Everlast Welders offers a comprehensive warranty and expert customer support to ensure you have the best experience possible. So why settle for less? Invest in the best and make your next welding project a success with Everlast Welders. Visit EverlastWelders.com to learn more and see their full line of welding equipment today. And don't forget to get that free Nova foot pedal and TIG torch upgrade when you buy any machine that comes with a stock foot pedal when you use Arc Junkies in the comment section at checkout. Everlast Welders. Weld mean, weld green. Now let's get back into the show. 
And it's yeah. and I think it's because you're you're comfortable. Like growth isn't comfortable. Growth no, a lot of times all. sucks, you know, because there's a lot of hardships that go along with it. You know, so for you to get out there and, you know, like work on that piece or whatever it is, you know, it can be anything in life. The hesitation to take that ne- next step forward. Like, you know, the work's got to get done. You know, it's going to pay off. You're just not ready to take that next step because you're comfortable right now. Everything you're on easy street. Everything's going hunky dory. You know, you, you everything's kind of planned out. Like you, you, you don't have anything unexpected coming your way. And now it's like, okay, shit. Like I really I put this off, for, you know, long enough. I just need to take that step. And, and all it is yeah. is that, that initial step, because once you hit that initial step, it's just momentum after that. You just start building up more momentum and more momentum. And, and now you're tracking, now you're growing. And then you're going to experience the ups and downs and life's going to hit you like a freaking wall sometimes. And you just got to get back up and keep pushing. No, you're, you're so right, man. It's, it, and it's funny, you even like, there's some things that you like saying, like, let's use going to the gym again as an example. It's like, there is no downside to that. You know that if you go consistently three times a week, you will be better as a you know functioning human, physically and mentally, than if you didn't go. But even with the guaranteed knowledge that this is worth it and it's going to pay off, you still feel that resistance. It's like yep. it's a weird thing, man. And like the same with going to school. I got hit up by like people who are, you know, they've been at you know, like let's call it, let's say it, like, they're like twenty five or something. Like they've got a job now. They're making some making some dough. They got like a position at work, and they're like, man, do I like really should I go back to school? And it's like, look, I know like it it feels hard right now. It feels hard to make that shift, but like it's so worth it, man. It's so worth it. Even if you don't like, it doesn't deviate your career path at all or like whatever. It's a hundred percent worth it. Cause you put yourself through like a stage of learning or growth. It's going to feel shitty to do. It's going to like shake up your schedule or whatever, or be some kind of initial investment to do it, but it's, it's fucking worth it, man. It's super worth it. Yeah. It's, I actually just had one of my students, uh, former students hit me up. He's been in industry probably about two years now. And he's like, okay. Hey dude, I want to go back and get like my, my project management degree. Like, where should I start? And I'm like, Oh dude, like, you know, good. I, I kind of laid out some advice for him and stuff. So I think he's going to take that up. But I mean, I want to say he's probably early to mid thirties, but I mean, it's, it's never too late to go to school. And I mean like that education that he's going to get is that's just going to help him, you know, advance. And, you know, again, it, there's going to be resistance there and he's probably very comfortable where he's at now. But there's there's a, you know, a motivating force or a driving force that says, no, you know what? I want more out of life. And in order to to get the things that I want or, you know, whatever that more is, you've got to get uncomfortable. You've got to embrace the suck. You've got to put in the time, the work, the effort. You've got to, you know, get up and go to the gym when you don't want to. you got to get out there and, and dust off the plate, you know, out in the shop when, when you don't want to. Like, you've got to do the things you don't want to do to get where you want to be because it, it's – yeah you're not going to get there by, you know, hanging out on easy street. No, man. And it, whether, whether it's school or fitness or whatever it is like doing that process over and over, just give it, that teaches you a skill in itself. Like overcoming adversity or like resistance is something that is like, you know, you can replicate that to a million different things in your life, man. Like, you know, like you and I are kind of the same age. It's like, shit is difficult in life sometimes like there's stuff that comes up and like you don't want to fucking do it or like you know when we got kids like there's obviously adversity that happens once in a while with that and like uh relationships in your life like and learning like the process of learning whether it's for fun or for profession like it's it will always be there in your life so it's like the more you actively look for those opportunities to take on adversity and like better yourself each time you do it is like it's a skill that's going to compound over time and like i think that's a really important thing that like i didn't learn a lot about when i was younger like and i i kind of like really want to teach a lot of that to my kids is like you know things that are hard are really fucking good for you it's like i don't think you should like put yourself through like punishment (laughs) stuff like that but like you got to look for opportunities to grow and those opportunities to grow can look like not fun things to do sometimes but it looks like work it it looks like work yeah yeah there's a saying around that i can't remember what it is off the top of my head but it 
it's dressed in overalls and looks like work or something like yeah. that. And it's, um, opportunity. I think, yeah. yeah. Opportunity often gets overlooked cause it, you know, yeah. Same thing you just said It's dressed in overalls and looks like work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's so true, man. And it's like, I don't know. That's something that I've really like embraced. Like, you know, I think like we live in an awesome time where we get exposure to guys like Jocko Willink and Joe Rogan and like Wes Watson and these dudes. It's like, they, they're really living proof of like a long process of something, right. Whether it's like an intellectual or like a professional in something um, like even you, man, like you're so accomplished with what you do ha- are doing in the trade as far as like your knowledge and certification to back all that is like, like that is a long process. And it's, that's a lot of hard work, dude. Like that does not come easy, but it's like, I don't know. You've obviously found a groove with what you're doing, right? Like you, you have a true passion for what you do that like, that hard work is the, uh, the outcome of the hard work is more worth the hard work. You know yeah. what I mean? No, a hundred percent. That's, that's the thing is like my, my mentality is never be satisfied Yeah. because as soon as you're satisfied, like you're not going to push yourself to do anything else. You fall that you get into that comfort zone and then now you're satisfied. You've got, you know, I've, I've said it a million times. Satisfaction is the death of desire. So once you're satisfied with everything, you've got no desire to do anything else. So like yeah. once I get comfortable with something, it's like, okay, now I need to find a new challenge. So I, I got the CWI, the CWE, all that. Like my next step is certified welding supervisor. Well, I, I got the welding welder performance qualification endorsement too. That like, that was the next okay. thing, you know, after my CWI and stuff is like, okay, I want to, I want to go after, you know, that. And, and that's kind of like my thing. And it's surrounded by, you know, I mean, it's, it's all enveloped in welding, which is something that I'm passionate about anyway. So it's just kind of a, easy, natural progression to like, okay, what's the next challenge? I want to keep moving. And I'm never going to master any one of these, you know, things that I'm going after, but I'm just going to continuously learn. Like what I learned from the the CWI and CWE, that helped me with the, the welding performance qualification endorsement, and then training welders and testing welders. And I'm sure that both of those are going to help me along with the certified welding supervisor endorsement. Like that's, that's the next step. So it's, it's just like little building blocks, but you can't, you can't be comfortable and it's, it definitely, it's dressed in overalls and it looks like hard work. And yeah. you know, like I, I enjoy the work a lot of times as much as it sucks. Sometimes I, I, they told us in the military, like embrace the suck. So, so like, it's, it's going to be shitty, you know, while you're doing it, but at the end, you know, it's, it's going to be worth it. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent, man. It's like, and it might not be like, I reached a point where like I had gotten certified and was like, you know, welding supervisor and stuff at my shop. And it was like, I almost like my interests started to shift towards obviously what more I'm doing now. So it's like, you know, you're, you're continuing on with this path that you're on. And but like to anybody else out there who's listening, like this doesn't have to apply specifically to a job or your job, or like this can apply to like literally, like literally any avenue of life. Like whether it's even just a like a hobby, like it's, um, there's things that you can do to pursue something that interests you, especially at this day and age, you could take like online courses and like, you know, online learning is is just going to get bigger in the next like three to five years. So it's like, it's an awesome time, man. Like if you have a passion or if you have an interest or want to change your, your career path, like, fuck, I'm like about to turn 40. And it's like, I changed my career path, which is like a big decision, obviously, but through like a lot of hard work and process to do so, like you and I have been able to do that, which is a, which is a big step. And um, I also just think it's like you and I have taken a lot of like stuff we've learned as far as like embracing the suck of going to school or waking up earlier, all this other shit that like, you know, keeps you on a path towards what you're doing. Like you can use those skills and those things you've learned over the years of doing that stuff to make a leap to pursue something different. It's, it's kind of cool that like that will never, whether your, your buddy who uh, is in his early to mid thirties or like, you know, someone like my dad's age, like there is a path of learning that is always available. And I really fucking hope that that's always something that I keep in my life. Cause I, yeah, yeah. That's what makes things really exciting. Yeah. And I mean, now's a great time too, because you've got the entire YouTube university. 
Like mm-hmm. anything you want to know, what, whether it's a hobby or you want to get into a sport or you want to get into a profession or you want to get into anything, there's a YouTube video for it. And it's free. You sign up. I mean, yeah, you got to like wait through the ads and, you know, all that stuff. But like you're going to get to the content that you want. Like my buddy uh, Brian, like I, I'm not great at metallurgy. That's something like I want to I want to learn about. It. I've got a genuine interest in it. He sent me a, a link to this professor and this professor for an entire semester he recorded every single one of his lectures and like taught at some like really high level school. I can access that via YouTube, you know, these 30 to 45 minute videos, absolutely free. And I don't even think they have ads in them. I think YouTube does that like the, uh, the obligatory, you know, one ad right at the beginning, but I don't think he set it up there to monetize his channel. So you're not getting an ad every seven minutes or whatever. So, I mean, you yeah. can just sit there and watch this entire lecture and like you're, you're in his classroom learning about this shit and it could be anything. What an opportunity. Like you've, you've got a neighbor that's a gardener, like, you know, his YouTube channel's blowing up. Obviously there's people that want to get into gardening. So you can pop onto YouTube and like watch all these gardening videos. I mean, like that's how I started getting more and more into blacksmithing. It's, it's all there. It's you're absolutely right, man. There's the, there, the amount of learning material out there is crazy. It's crazy. Like you say, you can literally sit and be a fly on the wall in a like established educational like institution of metallurgy and like, like anything, man, you can, you can learn anything. It's like, I don't know. It's just, a, it's just kind of like, there's too much out there these days that like, there really is. I really, I, I really encourage people that like, if they're interested in something, like they just need to focus and pursue that shit. Like, because the yeah the opportunities are ripe you can literally chase down anything you want and literally do it for free on your own time just yeah. like you know sipping a coffee in front of your laptop type of deal like that's it's, there's never been access to anything like no. that before and, and it, there's so many different types of information so if you're if you're a visual learner you can hop on youtube if you learn better yeah. like auditory you can download an audiobook you can listen to a podcast uh, I mean, there's there's all kinds of different lectures and stuff that are done via podcast forums. I mean, you hop on a Spotify or Apple Podcasts and, you know, download, you know, a lecture on this, that and the other thing. I mean, the information is out there. If you're a better, you know, if you learn better reading, like you can actually hop on Google and search up anything that you want to read. And it's it's all out there. Everything. Yeah. I mean, regardless of your learning style, whatever learning style suits you best, you can find that mode of education damn near for free on on everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome, man. I think like, yeah. And I mean, you can even partake in actual schooling things online now. Like it's, uh, you don't have to go pay for parking every day and like, you know, take a night class when your kids go to bed. Like you can, yeah, the whole learning environment is different these days. And it's just, it's just too good for someone like you or I, who's like, you know, hungry with something that you want to learn. Like Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's it's like, man, I just, I'm willing, to, like, I just want to fill my boots with everything I can. Like, my YouTube channel, like, if you watch, like, earlier episodes, like, they look terrible. Like, they're, they're, they're filmed poorly. Like, there's no quality to the sound. But, like, you compare, like, my last three years of videos, like, everything that you see as far as, like, good sound, good lighting, better filming, like, that is all being learned by watching YouTube videos. <laughs> it's like that's that's how i have learned to do what i am doing and that's how i have learned to set myself apart and be kind of original with what i'm doing on youtube is like like sure you could probably find the information elsewhere like you know i have a bit of a different take on a lot of stuff but like most of the information is pretty textbook shit so like but if you watch one of my videos you're gonna know it's one of my videos because it's filmed in a certain way it's got like a certain vibe a certain type of music and a certain presentation and it's like I have only been able to do that because of learning resources like YouTube and Peter McKinnon and stuff. It's like, yeah. Yeah. It is. It's all YouTube university. I mean, like you could, I mean, you can <laughs> definitely tell the last couple of videos that you've done. It looks like you've got a full production team and it's just you in your garage with a couple cameras set up and you know, yeah. you're controlling everything. And then once you get done, you you're doing the music, you're doing the editing, you know, all the after effects and all that stuff. And it, you learned all that via youtube yeah 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 and it's the best part man is that that's what makes it feel so rewarding to be in a spot where like my channel is you know relatively big it's not as big as i want it to be or as as big as others but it's like 
you know, it has gotten there through the process of me learning. Like it's, that's how it's gone, man. It's like, I don't know. I, I have a lot of respect for like the other channels in the welding industry, like, uh, you know, welding tips and tricks, like weld.com. Like there's a million channels that have been around way longer than I have. I respect them so much. It's kind of similar to what I talked about with my art. I was like, Hey, if I'm going to do this, I want to be different. And like, while you look at my earlier videos, they're not really that different. I guess it's like, you know, that's kind of my learning phase still, where I was just putting reps in. But now I'm in a place where I feel pretty comfortable that my stuff is pretty original. And like, it's, um, yeah, man, it's a, it's a really good time. It's a really good time right now. I'm really enjoying where everything's at. And like, yeah, it's just, it's just fun, dude. I'm just having fun. I mean, that's the thing. You know, I mean, like, that's why you started doing YouTube videos in the first place. It was fun. Yeah. And then it turned into like a job and then it wasn't fun anymore. And then it was, you know, I got to constantly, I went through the same shit. Like we were trying to, when I was with weld.com, we were trying to, okay, we're going to put out three videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And it got to a point oh, where God. it was like, are we just putting out content for the sake of putting out content? Can we dial it back and just do like Monday and Friday and like put some substance in these videos, you yeah. know, to where it's not, we're not just throwing shit out there to see what sticks to the wall and, you know, see if we can get something to go viral. Let's put something quality together and, and spend that, you know, the other three days during the week planning this stuff out and getting, you know, better shots and, you know, better content and stuff. So, and then, then it became fun again. Yeah. And that, that's the thing. I mean, you, you dialed it back. You were like, okay, this it's not fun anymore. I'm just putting out content for the sake of putting out content. Let me do what I want to do. Let me do, yeah. you know, let me see, let me see if this will work. And I, it's obviously working. I mean, like I said, the last, you know, several videos that you've put out, they're all high quality. I mean, it, it literally looks like you got a production team in there. You're doing some really oh, cool thanks. shit. And I can't wait to see, you know, this, this most recent piece that you did at the beginning. I want to, are you going to do like a middle and an end or is there like other stuff that's going to go in the middle? And then like the end is like your retirement party or what? Gosh, that's a, that's a deep question, man. I don't, I haven't even thought about that to be honest, but oh, you got to think about you, that, man. Uh, you, you bringing that up is kind of ominous. <laughs> I don't know if I want to say, <laughs> um, no, I mean, so like I have, um, so that song that is part of that art piece is one that I made specifically for, I started that art piece and then I got the idea and I was like, Oh, I got to make a score that will go with that. So I made a score that was like the beginning. It was like a fresh piece of music, fresh piece of art. It's really going to start this process, but I've got, so I think it's, I'm up to five fully completed songs. Now they're mastered, they're mixed. I'll probably tinker with them like a fair bit still when I'm in production with the art piece. But like, yeah, I have at least like a half dozen that I'm going to be doing. Um, now again, they take me a long time to do. So I don't know how long that's going to run me through my career. Um, but like, yeah, man, it's, it's, this is, that was the start to a very important thing to me to do in my life of creating art pieces that are pretty original. Like I want to make them as like original to my own thought process as I can. I want to make them like really special and, and impactful for like, people in the welding community as well as just art in general. Like I have like a real mission to like, you know, spread the message of like people need to be pursuing something that they're passionate about. Like, I don't give a fuck what it is, but like, you know, me doing something as ambitious as a two year art project and producing a music score and like having to take courses in music production to learn how to produce the music for it. Like, this process of me doing it is like, I want to lead by example of like, I'm re I really have a vision of what I want to do, not just with this one art piece, but like with, you know, several that are going to come, you know, at some point in my life that like, yeah, man, people, people should pursue stuff. People should like find something that just literally they can't stop thinking about and don't be, don't have reservation about it, man. There's so much stuff that's like, ah, you know, I got to be realistic. Like I, you know, and I think I like candidly say like, that's, that's bullshit, man. Like you, obviously you have to be realistic to like cover your bases of like, you know, I have a family and I got to support everybody and make sure everybody's cool. But like, um, man, if, if somebody has a passion to pursue something, like you, you, you have to do it. And we talk about this every time we, we do a podcast, <laughs> like Seems it's like, like it. a real it's, it's a, a real, real thing, thing man. It's yep. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's a very important thing for people. And I think it's just with the resources that are out there for people to pursue something like we've talked about. And then like just combined with like an interest that is very true to somebody like it's, it can really make you feel different about how you live your life. I think for a lot of people though, the the hardest part is finding your passion. Yeah. I mean, it it came naturally to me. And the funny thing is people are like, so what do you do in your free time? Shit. I don't know. Like I really kind of enjoy this welding thing. So it's not only, I I guess that's my job is doing welding and welding related things, but that's kind of also my hobby. That's what I like. (laughs) What do you do when you're not working? more welding stuff <laughs> so, I, mean, like, but, I mean you know and that's what people tell you to do is like you know do what you're passionate about and you'll never work a day in your life i i think we're kind of fortunate because we found that like you with your artwork you can take welding to a whole nother level but you can also go out there and like manufacture parts and pieces and make repairs and stuff like that and you know so for people that weld and love it it's easy you know like people that do i, I would imagine like cabinetry or furniture work i mean it's probably easy for them too because they're doing that stuff during the day and then you know like right they're at home you know like doing badass custom dovetails on their boxes and miter joints and all that stuff it's easy for them but like you know for a lot of people they don't they don't know what they enjoy and then they just get sucked into tiktok and instagram reels and like they've got nothing outside of work other than scrolling on the you know doing a death scroll on the phone all night yeah yeah you're absolutely right about that man that's like you're, you're totally right about that. That's um, we are very fortunate to have found a thing. Right. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I, I think like it's, it's tough cause you can't tell somebody what that thing's going to be for them, but also like, you know, I don't know. It, I don't even know what to say about it. It's like, there's, there's just, it's almost like tre- trying to drink from a fire hose as far as like the amount of resources that are out there. Um, you'll never be able to cover everything. Like you'll never be able to learn everything or learn everything about your thing. Like, you know, I'm sure with welding, like there's going to be aspects of it that you will, you know, I mean, maybe you might, you, you're already like pretty, pretty educated to it, but like, you know what I mean? It's like, I think you can make the path of learning endless. And that's a lot, that's really overwhelming to a lot of people. Um, but like, I don't know. I I have recommendations for people to just not be like shy about it either. Like if they just see something that they enjoy, like someone watches like a CrossFit video and they're like, Hey, that looks fun. Like, you know, try shit, like try something, go try it. Like, go, yeah, go do that. Like, don't, don't feel sheepish about it and don't feel like, you know, self-conscious trying something new. That's another big thing is people know that they have an interest in something, but they're like self-conscious to try it or, you know, and I think like, yeah, I, that would be like some advice is just like, you know, even if you don't know what it is, just keep trying shit. Like the process of being bad at something at, at first is almost like a very rewarding thing in itself. And, you know, especially if you keep up with something, you're going to see like incremental improvements in those things over the amount of time that you do it. That like that that is a, a feedback loop in itself that can get somebody really motivated and excited about. Yeah, this I, I got a buddy that um, I, I guess I kind of fall in the same boat because his wife said you're you're just like him. Like we're a collector of hobbies, uh. <laughs> so like I got into um, or he he got into metal detecting, and then unbeknownst to me, like I also got into metal detecting, and oh, like that's he's rad. He, he's a badass like uh, airbrush artist and like regular oh, artist, dude. and he's a pipe fitter by trade. But like he does like really cool artwork and stuff like that. But like we both have a bad habit of like getting into different hobbies. So like I did, I just recently did the same thing with blacksmithing, went out and got everything I needed, you know, try that for a little bit. And like, I, now I have the stuff to do it. You know, I can keep going back out and, and messing around with it when I get time, but like, same thing, like, um, metal detecting or scuba diving or, you know, like all these different things. Like I like to try a little bit of everything, you know, so like go out and experience things. And if you don't like it, like sell the shit and start over with something else. Yeah. Yeah, dude, hundred percent. I'm the same. I've taken up so many things that like I've gotten into and I like obsessively learn about. And then I'm like, Oh, like another thing. Yeah. Like <laughs> this, the, this, the ADD. <laughs> maybe. I don't know, man. I, I might, I might have a little bit of something like that, but, but it, I don't know, man. It, like you say, you sell your shit. You're like, Oh, whatever. Like I, you know, I had a bunch of paintball stuff forever. I was oh, super yeah, into that. that one too. Then, yeah. 
I was just like, you know what? I don't really want to do this anymore. So I sold all my shit and like bought a bunch of like other stuff for something else. And but like everything I've done has always given me something. Like I've always taken something from it as far as like learning a process of something or like understanding patience to a learning curve. Like, I don't know, man, there's, there's a, like, even though you don't stick with it, like whether you're collecting hobbies, like, <laughs> or like pursuing one thing, like, I don't know. There, I think there's a lot of benefit to, you know, trying a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Go out there and experience life. That's what it's all about, man. You get to meet yeah, so many 100%. new people and, you know, develop great contacts and relationships and you get to have a lot of fun. Then you realize what you're into and what you're not into. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of value in that, man. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Don't be afraid to try nothing. Nothing. Go for it. Hell yeah, man. I look forward to uh, checking out the rest of your stuff. Like, uh, especially, you know, if you drop another one of the videos like you did, if you guys haven't seen it, go to the Pacific Arc Welding, uh, or Pacific Arc TIG Welding channel on YouTube and then check out the beginning a TIG Welding experience. It's very cool. Yeah, thanks, man. It's on the main page. You'll see it right away. Nice. Well, dude, and as always, it's been a pleasure talking to you. I'm sure we'll hit it up on WhatsApp uh, periodically throughout the rest of the week. But yeah, thanks for coming out and uh, chilling on the show again. My pleasure, man. Always a pleasure. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for checking out this week's episode. I hope you all enjoyed the conversation between Dusty and I. Make sure to go out and check out his video over on the Pacific Arc TIG Welding channel on YouTube. Hope you all have a great rest of your week. Stay safe out there. And until next time, Make every well better than your last.